3D printing is an innovative technology that has been rapidly developing over the past few years. This technology, specifically FDM 3D printers or fused deposition modeling printers, has seen many improvements from the complicated DIY kits that took hours to build just to work a fraction of the time to easy to use printers that work right out of the box. These newer machines have improved quality, consistency, and speed, meaning they're becoming a more viable technology for manufacturing and easier for a beginner to start using. But do these advancements and new abilities offered by 3D printing actually constitute progress for the human species? Well, let's first break down how 3D printing works and its benefit over other manufacturing processes. A 3D printer works by taking a roll of a plastic material, heating it until it melts, and then pushing it out of a nozzle. A computer program tells the printer where to move the nozzle and deposit the molten filament. The printer works by printing the desired models in layers. You can imagine this as taking a bunch of 2D drawings, stacking them on top of each other to make one 3D object. Layer by layer, the printer draws these 2D structures and builds the model up from the bottom. Since the filament is melted before it comes out of the nozzle, as the printer adds more layers on top of one another, they fuse together creating a solid once the filament cools off and hardens again. There are many different types Types of filaments which each present different strengths and weaknesses. The main few that are used 99% of the time are PLA, PETG, ABS, ASA, and nylon. These are just different types of thermoplastics. A thermoplastic is just a plastic material that can be reheated and reformed into different shapes multiple times. In the manufacturing world, most plastic parts are made through a process called injection molding. Injection molding works by having a mold of the object you want to make, then the machine grinds and heats up plastic powder or pellets into a molten form. The melted plastic is then injected into the mold, hence the name injection molding. This is similar to 3D printing in that you are heating up a plastic and forming it into the shape you want and then cooling it back down. This process is much quicker than 3D printing because you can inject all the plastic at once as opposed to building the model by layers. It also offers better mechanical properties and precision than 3D printing does. Since 3D prints have layers, these act as weak points in the parts. Often, depending on the material, parts can be split in between the layers if they're held under stress. Some materials, however, like nylon, have a better resistance to this and offer greater inner layer strength, but in general, since injection molded parts are all one piece, they are stronger. While 3D printers these days have remarkable accuracy and tolerances when calibrated correctly, injection molding's precision is nearly unmatched, which is one of the reasons that this technology is so popular. With injection molding though, once you create the mold, you cannot change or modify the design at all. This means you must get the mold correct on the first iteration and all units will come out looking exactly the same. Along with this comes a large initial cost to start and make a product with injection molding. 3D printing, however, is significantly cheaper and many iterations of the same product can be made and customized. With 3D printing, you are not locked into one set design you must get perfect, but rather you can change the model as much as you want in between each print. This gives you the freedom to fix or change something about a previous iteration that did not work or go as planned. This ability would be super useful in the manufacturing world, not only speeding up the process of producing and putting a product to market, but also saving a significant amount of money because one 3D printer can be used to make thousands of different products, while injection molding molds can only make one. In the long run, however, injection molding is generally a quicker process for creating the physical products once the mold has been made. 3D printing technology also offers much more customization than injection molding technology does. But just imagine the possibilities if you have a 3D printer of your own at home. Instead of having the manufacturer customize the part, you could do it yourself. This would give you complete freedom to customize and design parts that perfectly fit your need. Imagine you buy a car and need to put a front license plate on it, but you don't have the correct mount. You can 3D print one like I did. In the case of old cars, parts can be very hard to find online. I struggled to find the license plate mounting hardware for my 1994 Pontiac Firebird. With a few quick CAD models and a few attempts, I was able to make my own mounting hardware and secure my license plate to the front of the car. 3D printing at home allows for full creative freedom, but not only can you customize models and create things that you need, but you can also fix things that you may have broken. Instead of going to the store to buy a replacement for something that may have broken, you could 3D print a new one or 3D print a part to fix or even improve it. 
How does 3D printing affect the environment though, and how does this compare to other manufacturing processes? There are a few different kinds of manufacturing, additive and subtractive being the most prominent. With subtractive manufacturing, you start with a portion of material and take away excess or unwanted material, leaving you with only the desired result. Often, the material you chip away from the original portion cannot be reused, meaning that subtractive manufacturing produces a significant amount of waste. Additive manufacturing, as you may assume, is the complete opposite. You start with nothing and only only put material in the places that you want it, meaning the waste is often significantly less because you're only putting the material in places where you want or need. Both 3D printing and injection molding are examples of additive manufacturing, meaning they produce little waste. Machining, milling, and CNC are all examples of subtractive manufacturing, meaning they produce a significant amount of waste. The downside with 3D printing is that printing in midair is not possible, so some additional material called supports are needed to hold parts of the print up that would otherwise be suspended. This means that there is still a bit of waste with 3D printing. A solution to this though is taking the support material, grinding it up, and reforming it back into usable filament. Some 3D printing materials claim to be biodegradable like PLA. This means that 3D printed parts that are made in PLA can be composted and will biodegrade back into the earth when they're done being used. Some other filaments are made from recycled plastic. One is made from fishing nets that are no longer used. Some people have also turned 2 liter soda bottles into usable filament with homemade machines. Not only are there environmentally friendly options, but having a 3D printer at home also poses environmental benefits as well. If you buy a product from a store and it breaks, you'll likely have to drive to the store and buy a new one or a part to fix it. If you 3D print it at home, you don't have to pollute the air by burning gas from driving. Or if you order a part online, there's a significant amount of waste that goes into getting that product into your hand. The part must be manufactured, then packaged, then shipped. There's waste in the shipping materials they use, and there's also pollution from all the vehicles that are used to deliver the product to you. A majority of this waste could be eliminated with 3D printing. If you 3D print a part to fix something from the comfort of your home, there's no need for any packaging or air pollution from driving it to your house. You can simply create a model and print the part to fix it yourself. This may not be a fully viable option though because not everybody has a 3D printer or knows how to get one up and running. This would take a shift in society to be accomplished. Instead of focusing on streamlining shipping, the process of making parts at home is what should be streamlined. Not only would this cut emissions by not having to ship the part to your house, but this would also be an opportunity for companies to profit by selling 3D models. A whole new market for 3D printer files will be opened up, creating new jobs and opportunities for companies to generate additional revenue. Charging a few dollars for a repair file would likely save the consumer money while also allowing the company to still capitalize on the repair. While at this time it may not be a possibility for these ideas to come to life, new printers are becoming easier and easier to use, helping us move our society towards a more DIY oriented culture. A few years ago, 3D printing was a technology technology that not many people knew about and seemed difficult to get started with. But now 3D printing is very widespread and most people have at least heard of it. The community is expanding more and more every day, meaning these ideas are closer to becoming a reality. Take for instance how we used to receive our media. In 1977, the VHS tape was released which made watching movies at home more accessible. However, in 1996, the DVD player was released which allowed for higher quality films at home. Stores emerged where you could rent or buy DVDs and VHS tapes which made it easier for you to view a movie that you wanted to see. Later, there were websites in which you could order or rent DVD. In more recent years, this has evolved into streaming services where you don't even have to leave the comfort of your home to watch any movie of your choosing. I think something similar could happen with manufacturing, and I believe 3D printing may be the key to make this happen. Are these advancements in technology actually advancing humankind though? To make progress as a species, our ability to express ourselves and be creative must be expanded. Not only does 3D printing create new and better options for manufacturing, Manufacturing, but it also allows people to more freely express themselves. With 3D printing, it allows ideas to come to life that were not possible before this technology was widely available. Having the ability to be your own manufacturer and engineer, designing new things, and taking what you think of in your mind to being a real item is something that 3D printing allows and encourages. This technology progresses our society and us as a species because we no longer need to rely on major companies or what is already out there to create something we are passionate about. Anyone can learn to 3D model and create their own products. They can create something that meets their needs exactly instead of making do with what is already out there. Over the past few years, the price of enthusiast 3D printers has gone down significantly. The question is, will 3D printing continue to improve to the scale where everyone has one, or will 3D printing become like the VHS tape, where new technology emerges from it and progresses into something more advanced like DVDs or streaming services did? A few years ago, a decent machine would cost you over $1,000. However, today you can get really good machines 
with top end features for under 500. This means that more people can afford to start this hobby. With all things considered, 3D printing is truly an innovative technology that constitutes true progress to mankind.